So, I see that everybody was here already for the overview talk, which is quite nice because then I could, can skip the first part of my presentation, which will be about how to collaborate in the OpenSUSE build service. And um, the general content will be what do I mean with collaborate? How does the build service allow me to do that? And in the end, show you some, some examples how people are doing it right now. So first, the what part. Um, as Adrian nicely explained, the build service is just, if you never heard of it, it's something. And I'm pretty sure for somebody that never heard of it, it's total chaos. You get projects and packages and builds and repositories and there are maintainers and command line clients, blah, blah, blah. So I just want to make clear what the build service really is. The build service is a maintainer, creates a project which contains a package or more packages. The package contains sources and spec files, which then get, which then get built. And the result is a repository containing binary packages. So that's the part where the end users are. That's the part where the developers are. So with that cleared up, um, Let's have a look at how the build service supports me in collabor collaboration with others. So there are two hooks you have to collaborate in the build service, two easy hooks. Um, the one is based on the project level, which, as we can recall, is uh, just some place that contains one or more packages. Um, the other one is at the package level, that means um, I can do a contribution purely on a package level. So if I have more than one package in my repository, I can collaborate with Adrian on one, but not the other. So first is um, how do I collaborate on a project level? Uh, it's fairly easy. You can either in the in the web client, you can either click add user and I can, for my project, add Adrian as another maintainer and be done with it. So Adrian has all the same rights that I have. You can add packages, delete packages, submit other code or submit patches, everything. So I can do it in a web client with a simple click, or I can do it in a command line client, like I've shown here, um, which is just not a good font, so it wandered down, but it's just adding one line to some XML file. So I have my project, I'm the maintainer of that project, and I added just another user as maintainer, in this case, Derek's. So this is collaboration on the, on the project level. So now me, Hennel, and Derek can do everything in that project. Like I told you before, I can have another easy hook to collaborate, which is the package. And surprisingly enough, it is totally the same. We have just another XML file and I can just add another line and collaborate on the package. The same way on the web client, I can just add user as maintainer. So in this case, I have rights to do something to that package, like adding another patch, updating it, whatever, changing configure lines, whatever, and I just granted Derek the same rights. So this is the second easy hook to do collaboration. And then there is the usual practice we have um, in the open source world, 
that people are just saying, oh, no problem, just submit me a patch. And um, this is the usual case because nobody wants others to mess with his own system. So if I don't want people to add packages to my project, remove packages from my project, if I don't want to have people, other people than me to have the ability to change one single package, I can always say, okay, come on, submit me a patch. So there is tooling for that in the OpenSUSE build service. I mean, it's always easy to just do that. I mean, come up to someone and say, dude, I've updated your package to 1.1. I made you a patch, and that's easy. But we have tooling around that process. So the same as this you can do with an OSC command. Um, which means, obviously, if I updated Pascal's package, then I had a look at the package. I grabbed it from somewhere. I gone over it, did my changes. Now I have them compiled in a patch. And I say to Pascal, oh, come on, I submi submit it to you. So the same is just here as tooling in the, in the <coughs> OpenSUSE build service means I just get Pascal's package from somewhere, which is OC branch. So I branch it from Pascal's project. This will <coughs> create a um, copy of that package in a project of mine, which is under my home in the OpenSUSE build service, which is I then can check out. So I have the actual files in my, on my system, can do my changes, and can do the telling Pascal that I have updated his foo to 1.1, and telling him that I mailed him a patch. I can do that with a command too. I can just do OC, submit request, create, and then create a patch from my project, which I updated to, to his version, which is not updated. <laughs> and Pascal gets a mail, and we'll see that there is a submit request for his package foo. So from Pascal's side, this looks like, OK, there is a submit request. If there's more than one, he can list them on his project, and he can look at what I did in, with the tool, which is submit web show. So either Pascal now says, oh, I like that, then he commits it to his tree, or he can say, no, it's nice that you've done that, and I can take like 90% of it, but there is stuff that I won't take. So he can either accept these or, or not accept these. And if he not accept these, I get a mail again, and he can tell me in that mail, OK, you updated to version 1.1, but you changed this one configure switch, which I don't like. I want to have it otherwise, and stuff like that. So the whole process of two people talking to each other is like automated in a tool, which it makes it easy to scale that up. So if my, I mean, if me and Pascal ta talk, it's probably better if we do it on some IRC channel than to me branching his package and blah, 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 blah. But if you have more than two users involved, it really gets easy to get mixed up in that. So tooling around this process is really nice. So, sorry? Okay, 
So what I want to show you is now some examples of, of how people do stuff uh, and collaborate in the build service today. Um, as you can imagine, this uh, tooling I just showed you, you can use it in all kinds of ways. For instance, we have a new uh, repository in the OpenSUSE project, which is called Contrib, which is kind of a universal third-party package repository where people that are not directly contributing to the OpenSUSE factory have some place to put packages in. So, with the tooling we have for OpenSUSE factory contrib, which is the development branch, we do it like this. For new packages, if you want to submit your package that didn't exist before in factory contrib, you have to do a submit request, which means you have to do this Oh, I have this new package. I sent you a patch that adds it to your to your repository. Then there are people more than I mean there's a whole team behind that that just just reviews the submit requests that come in for new packages. Once you are granted access to that package uh, to the repository, you are the package maintainer. You are not the repository maintainer. That means the only thing you can change is your own package. You cannot add another one, you cannot remove other packages, you cannot do anything to the repository, you can only do stuff to your own package. And this means process-wise, if you update a package, you just work, work on it and check in and, and stuff like that. If you don't want to maintain it anymore in, in that repository, if you say, okay, maybe I, 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 I maintain KDE 2 in it and now KDE 4 is there, so I want to get rid of it because everybody has moved on to KDE 4 anyway, I can just drop it, for instance. So I can do whatever I want to my package, but not, not, to, the, not to the repository. Then there's kind of an extra repository for every released version of OpenSUSE. So, for instance, with 11.2, we will have 11.2 Contrib, where the tooling and the process is completely different. So, for new packages are simply not allowed. The project maintainers means that can do stuff to the project, like deleting packages and stuff like that, or having it built for some other distribution or whatever, are still the contrib team. In this case, for the individual packages, the maintainers are also the contrib team, which means if you had your package in factory contrib, you could do everything. If, you, if it wandered to 11.2 contrib, you can't do anything. You, for everything you, you do to that package, you have to submit a patch again. So, you can see in that example that we are trying to follow the general factory rule we have at the moment. This is unreadable, <laughs> so I can explain a little bit. This is actually, that's the usual OpenSUSE development model. On the upper line you have the factory stream, which is just like in your SVN, your head branch or whatever, always the newest stuff. Then somewhere, at some point in time, we start uh, the development of 11.2, then do something, release alphas, betas, and then gold masters, and then er somewhere in time, the development for 11.2 stops. And we branch away 11.2 and have the same here. So this is the general OpenSUSE development mo model, which is kind of reflected here. You can do everything in factory. You can't do shit in release projects. So 
This is how we today in, in OpenSUSE Contrib use the tooling around uh, the OpenSUSE build service to just f have a, a, a repository that follows the general OpenSUSE development model. So how do we do it today for factory, which is the OpenSUSE development distribution? Um, at the moment, we have for each package in the distribution, we have someone directly responsible as maintainer, which means it's kind of easy to, to, to set tooling up around that, because if you want to submit something to the Vim package of OpenSUSE factory, you have to go to the Vim maintainer and tell him, I have changed this and that and that and can send you a patch. So the idea at the moment is that you just do a submit request to the OpenSUSE factory Vim package and the Vim maintainer takes care of all the OpenSUSE factory Vim submit requests. This is how we how we are doing it now, um, which kind of scales badly because for every package you need someone directly responsible, which means uh, if we have like today somewhat 3,000 packages, you have like either you add more people that care for factory, if you add more packages, or the package count for individual developers goes up. And what we see at the moment in the OpenSUSE build services, that factory cannot really keep up anymore because uh, you need to find other methods than, than having someone directly responsible for a package. And this is kind of the, the state we are at now and where we are trying to come up with solutions and um, one of the things we thought of in the moment is uh, to have some kind of review team like the OpenSUSE Contrib team that that is not directly responsible for one package but where people reviewing just simple patches and stuff like that and um, that's the way we currently think we can do it. But there we are in discussions. And that is because for factory, there are a lot of restrictions. For instance, factory gets used to build a lot of other packages. So if you con submit something to factory, it gets immediately used for building other stuff and a lot of stuff like the whole build service. It has, I mean, every project in the build service, at least every OpenSUSE project has an OpenSUSE factory branch where they build against factory. So that's one restriction we have that there has to be some review Otherwise, you can't do it. Um, then there has to be some scheduling. Uh, because, I mean, if all of you have one after the, uh, the other great ideas for the glibc package, and you submit and submit and submit and submit, nothing will ever get built. Because uh, if glibc changes, like the whole system changes and gets rebuilt. So if you check something into glibc and then you and then you and then you nothing gets ever built. That's another thing we need to do with factory scheduling. And as you can see there are a lot of restrictions but I think the tooling around the OpenSUSE build service um, is actually equipped to handle that. So that's the current state of collaboration in the OpenSUSE build service. 
If you need me to, to show you stuff, we can go down to the booth and I can show you how to set up your project to, to uh, handle different, the different roles of maintainers and stuff like that. Or, in a, or I can show you how a submit request really looks like and not on a slide but in real life and stuff like that. And if you have other questions, you can ask them too. So are there any questions now you would like me to answer? I, yeah, you uh, you talk about branching, and um, I have two questions related to that. Uh, when you um, branch a package, if the if the original package it's changed, do you get a notification of that? No, no, not really. <laughs> okay. You could get a notification, but it actually it's not needed because the branching works with the source link mechanism. That means that you in your branch project has a reference to the original one still, and when you change something, the build service is, is storing your change. So when the other guy is, is a, what you link to is changing also, the system automatically f uh, tries to uh, merge both changes, and it's still working. Of course, there can be the situation that the, uh, that the stuff is conflicting. And there we still have a problem that the merge handling is not nice enough. This is something that we need to work on at the moment. But in theory, you can. Uh, that's also a uh, good thing when there are, for example, five submit requests to one package. And now you accept the first one. And then uh, you see, okay, the other four, three of them are still applying, uh, but one, uh, one is not anymore. So you can decline it, please adapt it again. And the other three, you can see, okay, from then I take, I take that, that one, and then you can see if uh, the other both are still working. So it's uh, as long as, as the, merges are, the changes are not conflicting, it's really easy uh, to see if, if they have an influence to each other and to merge them together. Just the manual merge conflict solving tool is not there where it should be. That's something we, what we need to improve. My question was uh, more on the, uh, like, if I branch your package, uh, and I, wa I want to maintain that branch, not that you want to merge my patch on, on yours. Like, I have my patch, and every time you do a new version, I will get my my uh, branch rebuilt. That, That's true. That works with this sourcing mechanism. If you never make a submit request, okay, then the other guy will never. Uh, so uh, that's the same with the sourcing mechanism. I mean, that's the example with the kernel. You have the kernel, and you want the multimedia patch, but the kernel developers don't want it because it reduces the speed of the Oracle database then you can perfectly easily set up your branch project with the source link, and this is what happens in the end with the OSC branch command, add your patch, and as long as your patch applies, you will all the time get the latest package plus your patch compiled. So if the other guy is changing something, some source, your package gets compiled also again, including so, your patch. So to, 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 to make that quick, this OC branch command does nothing else than creating another project un beneath your home project and linking the sources. And can, you close, can you close a branch? Sorry? Can you close a branch? Like, you open a branch and uh, you maintain that branch, but when it's merged to the original you package? You just delete the project. You delete the project. Okay. And then uh, you said um, you talk about the country, the country team. Who is the country team? Is uh, SUS employees? You mean? No. What there, do you mean? I mean, I mean, there are SUS employees. I, for instance, am, I'm in the country team, but there are others as well that are not employed by SUSE or anything. So. Um, but what's the difference? I mean, uh, how someone gets into country team? 
You said you can. We initially started just doing a call, and who wants to? Because it means work. I mean, you you have to review patches from all over the place, and you have to review full packages. And in the end, if we uh, have a released contrib, like for 11.2, you will have to review security patches and stuff like that. So it means work. So initially, we just ask who wants to do it. And those guys who said yes are now the contrib team. <laughs> so there was no there was no formal decision making process or anything. We just asked and be done with it. Yes. If you if you yourself want to be maintainer of uh, contrib, you can uh, just come to the mailing list and say, okay, I want to help out. But in the end, we will probably clean up this team every once in a while and throw out people that are not contributing anymore. And why do you have to uh, have uh, people? I mean, when people in, in the factory contrib has to be not the same on that on the contrib team. Sorry? I mean, you have people that would be in the factory contrib and people on the contrib. Why no. it's not just the same people? No, we have, you have two repositories and you have one contrib team that is caring for in factory contrib only for new package submits. So if a package that wasn't there before gets submitted to contrib, you, this, this team has to take care of reviewing their package if and it's you say okay. You are, you are the package maintainer of the factory contrib. Let's, for example, I do a package hmm? and I ask for this package to be in the factory contrib and I'm the package maintainer. Then when this gets to contrib, do you mean that when this gets to release? Yeah, contrib I mean, state? Uh, I sh could uh, still be the, the the package maintainer. Hmm? Why it has to be a different person? No, I can explain too. Um, okay, let's try anyway. <laughs> you are not the the package maintainer anymore because otherwise you could change whatever you want in the release state of the repository. That means for the end users that use your packages, they have a moving target all the time. So we want to have quality packages in OpenSUSE Contrib. So we follow the same rules as we have with factory, which means, for instance, no new packages on, in released repositories, no um, version updates or only sparse version, version updates for security problems. Or um, we say, okay, uh, we are not changing the way the the whole thing is built too often, so we don't get rebuilt too often and stuff like that. So um, that's why package maintainers, individual package maintainers, cannot maintain their own stuff in the release state of the contrib repository anymore. That's the stuff the contrib team will care for which does not mean you're not responsible anymore or you're not, you're not able to help anymore. It's just not you cannot check in every time you want to. Maintaining it in factory contract is fun. Maintaining it in 11.2 contract is work. Yeah, yeah but uh, I mean, if you want to have a, a, a package that works with factory and you don't want to maintain that package, you just have your home projects but if you want a package to be in the country, I think you should be the one to to maintain that package. No. Um, I, I think it, it might be that sometimes the for the recording. There are probably uh, some cases where the original maintainer is also in the contrib team and he is then of course also maintaining his own package in the country. It's not that as soon in the in the moment that you join in the in the moment you join the contrib team you're no longer allowed to maintain your own package that's not the problem but if you're maintaining it for the contrib team you have a different set of standards to obey to no version updates no oh that's a funny feature i enable it now no you can do that in factory but don't do that in the in the stable 
contributing. It's basically the same like we work at, uh, at SUSE when we package. I'm, sometimes I would like to do a version update for a released version, but it's very hard. You need very good arguments to be able to do that. Adrian also wants to. Uh, what you need to keep in mind is um, that we want to have really lots of people using Quantip, and we want to have um, as much trust into this repository as possible. What's important here is it's uh, with the build service always the thing stuff gets built automatically, and people who have added this repository are get directly affected. So it's way more risky than uh, with just an SVN where people can review it or ins uh, usually any standard user. But a package which get installed is in gets installed as root, and so the so there is some risk that it damages the system. And especially for an, an stable system, like an OpenSUSE 11.2, uh, there must be some review, in our opinion, and, to, and to, have, to keep the trust. And as you maybe can hear from the, from the comments from Stefan and Adrian, uh, it's kind of my evil hidden plan to form <laughs> factory contrib after factory, so in the end we can just merge them back together and have contributions to to a factory directly and but first we need to resolve this uh, this review step somehow because I mean factory contrib will have a lot of users but factory has really a lot of users and you don't want to change uh, stuff in there that breaks people's system or that opens root holes or whatever. So um, there has to be a review and that's my personal evil plan, how I designed factory contrib to, <laughs> to adhere to the same standards as factory because in the end we will just merge them back together. But that's stuff for the future and this is what we have now. So, any more questions? Okay. Then I'm finished early. <laughs> Good. Thanks. <laughs>